And then Hudayfa asked, O oh Messenger of Allah, what about if there is no Jama'ah at that time? And there is no Imam or Amir at that time. What should I do? How should I live in a world of Islam in which all the Muslims are like sheep without a shepherd? That's the question. All the Muslims are like sheep without a shepherd, without an Amir or Imam and an obligation to listen and obey him. And a pledge that you will listen and obey. And therefore you living as a flock of sheep under the guidance of a shepherd. If there is no such thing, what should I do? When we have the shopping mall version of Islam. He said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. He said, you must stay away from all the firaq. All the versions of Islam that you will find at that time. All. When there is no imam and no amir. Will all now be designated as misguided communities. Who have broken away from the main body of Islam. Firaq. He says, you must stay away from all those firaq. Even, after, even if you have to hold on to the stump of a tree and bite and chew it until death overtakes you. Do not be a part of that firaq. That which is parading as Islam, but which is not Islam. Where is the Amir today? Where is the Jama'a today? The Khilafah disappeared. And once the Khilafah disappeared, of course somebody is going to come forward and say to me, well, Khilafah disappeared in early Islam. We say no. Up to 1924, we still had the institution of the Khilafah, which recognized the sovereignty of Allah. The seat of the Khilafah may have been filled through a process which may be described as mulukia or monarchy. But the institution of the Khilafah survived until 1924. Today it's gone. So now today where do we get the Amir? If we can establish Islam on any territory on the face of the earth, establish Islam, then that territory will become Darul Islam. And the Amir in that territory, on the condition that he has authority over the Hajj, therefore the Hijaz, would become the Amir al Mu'mineen. Hmm? That is not possible today. It has not been possible for the last almost 80 years, and it is still not possible to this day. Well, then what do we do? What do we do? There are those who hold the view that it is possible today to take control of territory through a revolutionary struggle. Take control of territory in the name of Islam and to restore Darul Islam. Of course, they don't call it Darul Islam anymore. They have coined a new term. I never heard it before. I don't know what it is, but they call it the Islamic State. Have you heard of it? I don't know what it is. I know what is Darul Islam. I don't know what is this Islamic State. Anyhow, they call it the Islamic State. And they say when we establish the Islamic State, then we can have the Khilafah restored. Hmm? Well, we say to them, we're not preventing you from waging that struggle. So do not ever, ever, ever say that Imran Hussein prevented you from waging that struggle. We say that 80 years have gone and you have not succeeded. We say you cannot succeed in restoring the Khilafah until you can liberate the Hijaz, the Haramain, therefore the Hajj. We say you cannot do that. 
so long as those who control the world today possess the power that they have. You cannot do it. This is only a pragmatic analysis based on a perception of power in the world. That's all. Nothing yet on theoretical analysis from the position of Islam. But those of you who attended my previous lectures would know that I have argued, and this is found in my book, Jerusalem in the Quran, that we are now living in the age of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. How did I come to that conclusion? If you have not understood it as yet, go to my book and read it. There's a whole chapter on Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So long as Ya'juj and Ma'juj constitute the world order, they possess a power which none can destroy but Allah, Sahih Muslim. And therefore I came to the conclusion that it is impossible, theoretically impossible, for us to be able to restore Darul Islam anywhere on the face of the earth today. At that time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and it is there in Sahih Muslim that he will do that, then their grip and their world power, their world order will crumble. It is at that time that Islam will be restored, and indeed Islam is going to become the ruling state in the world. The Khilafah will also be restored at that time. Hmm? What do we do in the meantime? Our response is, hold on to the Jama'ah and hold on to the Amir. We say, if we cannot establish the Jama'ah and the Amir in control over territory, is it permissible for us to have a Jama'ah and Amir in territory over which we do not have control? Well then, let us ask the question. While we were in Mecca, before the Hijra to Medina, did we live as a flock of sheep who were scattered all over the place with no shepherd? Or in Medina, in Mecca, prior to the Hijra, were we a community? And that community was a flock of sheep. And that flock of sheep had a shepherd. In Mecca. <coughs> the answer is, while we were in Mecca, we were a community. Even though we did not have control over territory. And we did have an Amir who was the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And so we conclude that today, even though we do not have the Khilafah and we do not have Darul Islam, knowing that we will be having it in the future, today it is still possible for us to have the Jama'ah and to have the Amir if we want to have Islam. That Amir would be the Amir of a limited community. A limited community. And so you'll have many such communities scattered all over the earth in different parts and they will all have an Amir to whom they will pledge obedience because this is a, an indispensable part of our collective life. Discipline. Discipline. So you've got to pledge to obey. And when you give your word, you keep your word. Mm -hmm. When the Khilafah is restored, at that time, all of these, Amir of this Jama'ah and Amir of that Jama'ah, will all now pledge their obedience to the Imam, Amir al-Mu'minin. And then the unity of the Ummah would be restored. Hmm? Is it possible for us to preserve our Islam like this? In a little corner somewhere. And a small group. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the time would come when a man, in order to preserve his deen, would have to flee to the mountainsides where rain falls and take with him some sheep and goats. So, yes. 
you can preserve Islam in a small community at the mountainside where rain falls with some sheep and goats. You can preserve your Islam provided that you live together as a flock of sheep with a shepherd. When the Khilafah was destroyed, 1924, uh, you will find this information in my book, The Caliphate, the Hejaz, and the Saudi Wahhabi Nation State. Those of you who have read it, you will now be shaking your heads. Remember, after Mustafa Kamal abolished the Khilafah, then Jamia Al-Azhar, Jamia Al-Azhar, Al-Azhar University responded. Sheikh Al-Azhar called together a meeting of all the ulama of Al-Azhar and the leading ulama of Egypt. And they consulted on the matter. And then Sheikh Al-Azhar issued a proclamation on behalf of Al-Azhar and the ulama of Egypt. And in that proclamation, he denounced the abolition of the Khilafah as bid'ah hmm? and haram. In arguing the necessity for the Khilafah, Sheikh Al-Azhar quoted a hadith which is in Sahih Muslim. Listen to it. Mamata, whosoever dies. The Prophet is speaking, alayhi salatu wasalam. Mamata. Whosoever dies without the obligation of bay'ah upon him, his neck, meaning he had not given the pledge to obey the Amir. Such a person has died the death of Jahiliyyah. And so, even though the Khilafah is gone, we still have an obligation to give the pledge of, of bay'ah to an Amir. It is of course a pity, a pity, a pity that the Sufis have used this terminology of bay'ah for a pledge of obedience to the Sufi Sheikh. I wish they had never utilized this term which belongs to our collective existence. Hmm? Bea, how then do we respond? How do we fulfill our obligations in order preserve, to preserve our Islam so we don't die in Jahiliyyah? What a terrible surprise would that be, eh? After we die, then we realize we didn't die in Islam. We died in Jahiliyyah. <laughs> huh? What do we do? Our response comes out of Surah Al-Kahf of the Qur'an where the young men who lived in a world of shirk similar like the world today disconnected from that world of shirk When you disconnect from them and their shirk Flee to the cave Yanshur lakum rabbukum mirahmati Allah will shower you with his mercy. And he'll make easy for you your difficulty. Mm -hmm. Disconnecting from the godless world means disconnecting from the centers of godlessness and shirk, which are concentrated today in the cities. And so we flee to the countryside. That is the philosophy. Flee to the countryside. Using the guidance of Surat al -Kaf. And when you go to the countryside, outside of the cities, remote from the cities, there we establish ourselves in a small community because a man will flee to the mountainside with some sheep and goats. This is not a big city. Hmm? A small community. This is why we call it a village. We do not want it to ever grow in size to become more than a village. Village is Basti. Basti. Huh? Huh? Gao. A village. 
not a town.